Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's video in the 2021 Summer Beauty in Sound Organ Festival. Tonight's video is a very special uh, video. It's a compilation of some of our younger organists from around the world. We have eight young organists um, starting from the age of 12 going up to the age of 23. Um, we have Andy Brown, Connor Larson, Paul Fye, uh, Thomas Abit, Stone Alvarado, Benas um, Montes Vacius, uh, Raphael Elvish, and Levan uh, Zautashvili. You'll have to excuse me if, if uh, any of those pronunciations are a little bit wayward. Apologies. Uh, all the organists are going to announce their own pieces and announce themselves, so actually you'll hear very little of me tonight, which you'll probably breathe a sigh of relief. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Andy Brown, who is 18, and he is over in the USA. Now, before I hand over to Andy, I'm just going to apologise to Andy, uh, because I've switched round his two pieces. So we're going to start with the V-Door before going into the Lock Liar second. So, Andy, take it away. Hello everyone, my name is Andy Brown, I am 18 years old. Today I will be playing for you two pieces. The first one is the fourth movement of a suite for organ called Rubrics by Dan Locklider. This movement is called The Peace May Be Exchanged. Uh, it's a beautiful movement that uses the wonderful strings of the organ with a principal stop solo. The second piece I will play is the first movement of the sixth organ symphony in G minor by Charles Marie Vidor. Uh, and this will be kind of interesting because Richard is actually going to be playing this tomorrow on his recital. Um, now the organ I will be playing on is my Hopwerk setup. Uh, and the sample set I will be using is the Palace of the Arts organ in Budapest, Hungary, uh, sampled by Inspired Acoustics.
Well, thank you very much indeed, Andy Brown, for uh, not only playing from memory, um, but providing those two wonderful pieces. Um, certainly when I was 18, I would not have been able to play that Vidor, certainly at that speed. So well done, Andy, indeed. That was really terrific. It gives me some ideas for my own performance um, tomorrow night. I don't think I'll be quite as um, brisk as that. Um, the organ of corn actually has quite a big acoustic, so I need to play to the acoustic as well. I saw quite a bit of chat about organ shoes. Well, look what I've got here, an organ shoe. I think um, generally these are, these are um, the standard organ shoe, aren't they? These are American. Uh, they've come from organmastershoes.com. <clears throat> and whenever I wear them, I always get comments, normally from American listeners, actually, uh, saying, oh, you scruffy, you should, you should get them polished up. Polish your shoes. What would your mum say? And I, and I say to that, well, I wear these shoes uh, with pride. All of these scuffs tell a story. So these, um, the mark here, for example, is where I uh, would open the swell pedal uh, from underneath. If I'm playing, uh, you know, both uh, feet are playing pedal notes, middle D, for example, on the heel, um, and I need to open the box, go under the swell pedal to flip it up. That's why that one has um, scuffed. Um, if I turn it over, you'll see a hole in the bottom of the shoe, and that's from the advance button at Winchester Cathedral, the toe piston at the advance. It was, I always used that foot, and latterly it became quite painful. <laughs> but I'll never polish them, no matter how nicely you ask, and I will never change them, because I, I like them like that. They, they remind me of all the organs that I've played. Um, right, let's go on to our second artist tonight, uh, Connor Larson, who is uh, 23 and also in America. Uh, Connor is going to play two pieces tonight. Um, he's going to play uh, Marcel Dupré's Cortège et Litanie, uh, going into uh, Bach's In Dear Is Freude uh, from the Orgel Buchlein uh, BWV 615. So without further ado, um, let's hand over to Connor. Hi there, my name is Connor Larson. I'm an organ student, 23 years old, in the United States. I'm originally from Utah, but am studying organ performance in North Carolina at Campbell University. Um, I will be playing Cortege et Litany by Marcel Dupre on the organ at Campbell University located in the beautiful Butler Chapel. Thanks.
Year ist Freud, Indie is Gladness from Johann Sebastian Bach's Orgel Buchlein, BWV 615. Thank you very much, Connor, indeed. In dir is Freude, in you is joy. And as people were saying in the chat just now, there was certainly a lot of joy in the way you played that. Um, I must admit, you play it a bit faster than me. Um, I feel a bit left behind today because uh, Andy and Connor both play repertoire pieces considerably faster than I do. Should I be worried? <laughs> Connor, that was really, really wonderful. I particularly like the um, the bells and the Dupre. That was a really nice effect. That's something that I can't quite do on here. Um, we could do it from Alessandro, I suppose, but Rotterdam and Conn doesn't have any um, any bells that I know of, unless they're hidden in the specification somewhere. Um, great stuff. Interestingly, talking about tempo, um, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, as young organists, I, mean, I remember um, playing things. Uh, if if something felt if if something felt playable if, if if a hard piece felt playable, then I wasn't playing it fast enough. It was, it was my mentality. I sh it, there were some pieces that I just knew I shouldn't be able to play because they were too hard and beyond me, but I was able to sort of get around them. And I thought I can't be playing this fast enough. I have to play it on the edge of my ability, um, tempo wise. I think the, one of the biggest learning curves that we go through as organists, I think we've all been through this, um, is the ability to actually hold the tempo back and really control it and hold on to it. You know, in, in uh, my preparation to, for tomorrow night's recital, um, the, the uh, complete symphony by Vidor, his sixth symphony, I've listened to two recordings, uh, two what I think are benchmark recordings, uh, both by a French organist, um, 
Olivia Latry and from um, Notre Dame and Ben Van Oosten from uh, St. Ouen. Very different performances. Olivia Latry um, is always a very, very exciting and meticulously accurate player. I don't know how he... I've never heard him play a wrong note. Can someone please, please pass me a recording, a recording when he plays a single wrong note? I can't believe he doesn't play wrong notes. Um, but ben, ben Van Oosten plays much more... with, 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 with much more um, breadth and space. Both equally as riveting and fascinating. Um, but somehow, I personally, I'm, I'm drawn into Ben's performance because there's more space in it. Olivia's uh, performances are electric and they're alive, um, but Ben's are more, somehow more heartfelt. So actually, tomorrow night, I'm going for Ben's performance. I'm very interested to know what, your, what you think about my tempo tomorrow night. In incidentally, the Dupre was the first piece by Dupre that I ever learned. So, <laughs> back at university. Let's go on to um, Paul, Paul Fye now. You may know Paul. I don't know whether you're in the chat, Paul. Please do say hello if you are. And uh, uh, the other organists as well. And I've seen Stone in the chat. Uh, please do say hello, all of you. I think Andy's not, not around. So, Connor, I don't know whether you're in or not. But Paul's going to play two pieces, a piece by Bark, um, with a very famous and notoriously difficult and exposed um, first bar in the pedal. You know what I mean. Um, and then he's going to go into a piece by Paul Fai, a tuba tune that he, he's written only about two weeks ago. So this is, um, it's brand spanking new. Um, you heard Paul's um, elegy in the uh, Call of the Composers 2 on Wednesday. So this is Paul's second appearance in the um, Beauty and Sound Organ Festival. And I will now hand over to Paul to introduce his own music. Hi, my name is Paul Fai. I'm 22 years old and today I would like to play some Bach for you uh, which will be the uh, Preludium und Fuge in D major and I'll be playing on the beautiful Markerson organ of uh, St. Laurenskirk in Rotterdam. Enjoy! <laughs>
Hi, it's Paul again. Uh, now I'd like to play the tuba tune, which I wrote like two weeks ago. And it will be played on the uh, Skinner organ of Emmanuel Presbyterian Church in Los Angeles. Enjoy. Very cheeky interrupted cadence at the end there, Paul. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I think that's the whole point of an interrupted cadence, isn't it? Well done. Um, well done for your bark. Um, certainly was very energetic and very lively indeed. Um, I've played that on the channel uh, myself, I think twice. Uh, once from the organ um, in Essen, um, a very dry acoustic, and also in Harlem. Um, I don't know whether who's faster actually in the uh, in the Essen recording or Paul's own performance just then maybe we should do a, a tempo check for that one perhaps um, for the first time this evening and maybe I'm not the slowest <laughs> I seem to be um, trailing behind all of these young organists and tempo wise but maybe someone can go and check the tempo on my Essen performance of, of uh, 532 I really liked the embellishes uh, in the um, the embellishments in the first movement, in the prelude, very, very exciting. Some good ideas there. I might borrow some of them if that's okay. <laughs> Terrific stuff. Really, really good. Um, I think Paul is one of these sorts of people who has a really good um, control and understanding of tempo. This is what I was just saying a minute ago. It's um, This comes to everybody at some point, but you to have that ability to control and really hold on to the tempo is um, what takes um, musicians to the next level, I think. Um, and it's actually very hard to do when thinking about all the notes, all, all the articulation, uh, all the registration and everything else. And then I have to think about the tempo as well. So much to think about. Terrific. Paul, well done. I look forward to um, hearing from you again soon. Okay, let's go over to Denmark now for uh, Thomas um, obit, not obit. Apologies for the pronunciation. Thomas is going to play um, a piece which I learned when I was um, about the same sort of age actually as Thomas. I think I was a bit younger. I was at university in my first year and I played Hindemith's second organ sonata simply because my, um, my senior organ scholar at university played it and I thought it was, it was really, really cool. It's three movements, uh, very short, um, well shortish movements and it's probably the most accessible piece um, that Paul Hindemith wrote for the organ. There's at least one other organ sonata, which is quite long, um, but sonata number two is just the right sort of length, I think, um, and is, it has some really, really memorable tunes. I think so, anyway. So, Thomas, um, 20 years old, over in Denmark, take it away. Hi, my name is Thomas Robert. I am 20 years old and I have recorded the second sonata by Paul Hindemith in the church of Thomas Kingo in Odense in Denmark.
fantastic stuff. I love that organ sonata, actually. It's very, um, it's, it is well known in the organ world, but outside of serious organ music, it's not well known. It's well worth listening to again. I think as, as someone said, actually, um, I think it was Maurice said, uh, Paul Hindemith takes repeated listening uh, to, and actually when you understand what he's doing, it can be very lyrical and very beautiful. I'm a huge fan of that piece and I haven't played it in, gosh, well over 10 years. So I must, must get it out. In fact, I, I got it out to just make one or two notes about um, this concert. So it is, it's, it's right over there, but I need to play it again. Thomas, that really was a really ter terrific uh, performance. I really enjoyed seeing your uh, registrant um, keeping very busy I'm just, with incredible accuracy, actually. He knew exactly what to do at every single moment. That was really amazing. Um, and I, I was thinking exactly the same as, um, as you, um, all of you, you said about the, um, the Sassel Peace uh, video is watching whoever's playing there um, with the registrant on, on either side uh, doing all of the stops. It's a real team effort. It's really um, amazing to visually watch, isn't it? Speaking of uh, Sassel Peace, um, look what's here. It's the Vidor book. Vidor was the organist there. That's why there's a picture of Sassel Peace on this um, cover of Vidor's organ symphonies. I'm playing number six tomorrow if you're interested. Um, that's uh, 7.30 tomorrow night. Please tune in to that. Anyway, on to our youngest organist um, who, goes, who goes by the name of Stone Alvarado and is 12 years old. Amazing. I wasn't even playing the organ at 12. Um, I don't think I was anyway. I might have just, just, just started, but I'm not sure I was playing the organ at 12. Um, so Stone is already ahead of me. So by the time you're my age, you'll be um, well beyond my ability. <laughs> um, so I, I, I don't know whether you've actually got the program in front of you. I, I created a PDF with notes and instructions to each, P, uh, each um, event. And I said in this um, introduction to this joint junior organ recital that when I was a teenager the internet was just starting out and YouTube hadn't even been thought of. Um, one of my biggest eye-openers as a young adolescent was seeing other people at the same age as me play the organ, almost many times better than I could. I quote, I'm quoting myself here because I just want to tell you about a, a little story about a time when I went on an organ workshop or an organ, an RCO organ masterclass down at Bath Abbey. And I took a piece, I, I, must, I must have been 14 or 15 at the time. Um, it was on a Saturday um, and I broke my finger on the Thursday. Um, so I went down, with a, it was this finger actually, splint. Um, my finger was in a splint, but I was determined to go. I was going to play. I was going to play a piece by Stanford, a postlude in G, which I haven't played on my channel yet. I thought that was pretty impressive for a 15 year old. It was basically the hardest piece I could play well at the time. So I went to Bath Abbey really impressed, um, or thinking I would, I would impress the other people there. And um, this one lad got up to play, and he was younger than me. Um, he's, I won't, I won't say his name, but he's a couple of years younger than I am. Um, at least, it's probably three or four years younger than me actually, thinking about it, I'm thinking how old he is now. And he went up to the organ loft and played the first movement of Mendelssohn's fourth organ sonata. You know, the one in B flat. You know, the one that's actually quite hard um, with all the arpeggios and really quite tricky fingering, that one. He played that one flawlessly. And Peter King, who was taking the organ uh, masterclass, just simply said at the end, wow. <laughs> he didn't really have anything else to say. Um, and it was astonishing. And I think that, that was um, it's the equivalent now of young organists. I don't, I don't know how many young organists are watching now, but young organists watching now, uh, other people playing the organ. That was my equivalent back then because YouTube hadn't been thought of. So me seeing someone a bit younger than me playing really, really well was, um, I guess, I think probably one of the most inspirational things actually, because it really made me work hard and realize that okay, if I really want to succeed in the organ world, I've got to work hard because this is what some people are playing like. This is the ability some people are playing at now um, and they're, they're years behind me. So 
I do hope that this is uh, providing that same inspiration to um, young organists. So stone, as I say, is 12. And you, uh, you, if you've printed off a version of this program, you may have an out of date version. Stone actually is going to play the Gabriel um, Piene prelude um, on his organ. Um, and it's, he plays it from memory, which is really impressive for a 12 year old. Really, really impressive for a 12 year old. Apologies for the, um, the sound quality in this one. The sound quality isn't um, as, um, as good as it sometimes is. On this channel um, but regardless of that you can see um, Stone's um, huge potential and I really hope that you enjoy watching uh, Stone play with much passion and, um, and emotion. I was really moved by Stone's performance and I really hope that you are too. Stone, take it away. Hello, my name is Stone Alvarado. I'm 12 and from Abingdon, Virginia, and today I'll be playing Pierre's Prelude.
Thank you very much, Stone, indeed. What I found uh, particularly impressive by that performance um, was, as I said before, it was actually from memory. And there were one or two bits towards the end where Stone was actually working out what those big chords were. And he, did, he wasn't even, uh, for looking at the um, video when I was editing it, um, looking at the, the, I think you can just see the score on the, on the music desk. Um, but if you watch Stone, he doesn't look at it once. And I really like the, the fact that he was just able to work out, maybe from his, his ear or his, uh, his fingers, he was able to work out what the chord was without looking at the score. I think that is really impressive. So Stone, I think keep working um, at your playing, keep going, uh, keep doing what you're doing, um, and you will go far. I will uh, help and support you in any way um, that I can. Um, so please do um, reach out to me if you need any advice or any help. Well done, Stone. I look forward to hearing from you, uh, he he hearing more from you in the future. Now, uh, Benas Montes Vacius, apologies for any um, suspicious pronunciations of surnames there, is 20 and is from Lithuania. Um, and <laughs> Benas, he emailed me uh, ask, uh, saying that he'd like to be involved in the um, joint junior organ recital. And I said, of course, I'd love you to be involved. Um, but he said, the, the only problem is, is on holiday at the seaside. Um, and he hasn't really got an organ at the minute. <laughs> so like, he, but he has a keyboard there. Uh, so I, I thought, fair enough. I, what, I was half expecting him to, um, to su supply me with a video of him playing these pieces on the beach. But alas, they are not on the beach. They are in a very sensible house. Um, so as I say, he's 20 years old from Lithuania. He's going to play two pieces. Um, the first piece I don't actually know at all, uh, called Dance of the Girls. Um, so it's the only piece tonight that I've not come across. And the uh, second piece is going to be Louis, Louis Viennes or uh, Cortege. So both of these pieces are actually luckily for manuals only, uh, but he uses a, a nice um, Hauptwerk uh, sample set. Uh, so I'll hold a, a hand over to Benes now to introduce his, um, his pieces. Hello, this is Benes Matusevichus. I'm 20 years old, I'm recording from Palanga in Lithuania, and today I will play Dance of the Girls by Mansa Musafarov. <laughs>
I will play Cortege by Louis Vierge. Well done, Ben Ass, for um, not only playing that on a single keyboard of no pedals, uh, but for also propping up your music like that. We all saw it. Um, and also for getting away with taking your keyboard and Hauptwerk setup away with you on a holiday. I'm not quite sure what Caroline would say if I suggested taking this um, on holiday with us. I, th I think actually I probably do know what she'd say and it wouldn't be uh, entirely agreeable. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Ben Ass, for, for that. Um, look forward to hearing more from you and also for uh, hearing you on a, an organ with pedals as well. Um, terrific stuff, thank you very much indeed. Now we're gonna go on to our second youngest organist tonight. Uh, Raphael Elvish is age 16 and is in Australia. Um, so it's nice to have someone else um, from Australia um, join us here on Beauty and Sound. I know James is in the chat, um, a fellow Aussie. So what's Raphael going to play? Well, I'll tell you, he's going to play uh, Bach's uh, Christ Lag in Torres Banden, uh, BWV 625 from the Orgel Buchlein, uh, Jean Langlais' uh, Prière, very pretty piece, um, and then a piece which was new to me uh, by Frederick Swan, a festival to Carter on St. Anne. Um, him, um, which, which go with the words, oh God, our help in ages past. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to hearing him play that because it's, it's uh, new to me. 
This is Raphael's second appearance on Beauty in Sound. The first uh, was for the virtual choir that we did uh, last year. Um, Raphael was one of the, well, he probably, no, he wasn't. He was the second youngest person to submit a recording. We had a, um, a young soprano who I think was um, five or six. Very, very young indeed. Um, but anyway, so Raphael is going to play three pieces uh, for us and um, I'll hand over to Raphael now to introduce them. Hello everyone, my name is Raphael Elvis. I am 16 years old from Western Australia. Today I will be playing on the Guildford Grammar School organ dating from 1972, rebuilt in 1996 by Lynn Kirkham and originally built by John Marner. The first piece I'll be playing is Chris Lug in Thomas Stern by Bach. Hope you enjoy. Next piece I'll be playing is a prayer by Jean Longray. Hope you enjoy.
final piece I'll be playing for you today is the Festival Jakarta on St. Anne by Frederick Swan. It's a loud piece, so enjoy. <laughs> How awesome was that? Particularly the Zimbelstern at the end. Well, Raphael, that was amazing. Good to see you in the chat. Um, there's a piece by um, Peter um, Aben, which I think it's called Moto Ostinato, which does that, where he goes between, between the manuals. I think he actually does it on three manuals, though. Um, it's very, very hard to do, to jump um, at that speed to another manual and land on the right chord. Um, you've just reminded me of that piece and I have to dig it out it's a lot of fun that one is terrific I didn't know that piece at all and I will I will, I will be looking up um, looking out to the score um, and adding it to the repertoire soon so Raphael thank you for bringing that to our attention and thank you for playing so nicely um, a lovely contrasting program there of Bach Longley and um, Frederick Swan um, so thank you very much indeed also um, lovely organ the lovely acoustic as well um, e. Bibbs just said that it's so wonderful to see so many young people uh, playing the organ despite it not being a particularly uh, fashionable organ uh, amongst our younger crowd. Well, let's do something about that. Hey, E. Bibbs, this is what we're here for. Um, I think when I was um, uh, learning the organ and people, the, the generation before me, to learn the organ, to play an organ, we... Um, we, I, had to go out to a, a church, physically leave home and go to a church to play the organ, away from home, uh, friends, away from family, away from my computer, away from the television, go into church and play. I used to do that, do that every Saturday, I used to go down to a church, um, Saturday afternoon at one o'clock, spend all day playing the organ um, until about four o'clock, head down to um, another church and then play there, uh, for, um, combined with an organ lesson and for another couple of hours actually uh, that was my Saturday routine and also Thursday night as well was my Saturday was sorry was my organ practice night but now of course I can just play here one of the downstairs um, with a nice drink um, and just play the organ with the cats here and just pop off and go and make a coffee or something it's so wonderful to be able to do this and I think actually now these organs at home are more accessible. It makes the organ generally more accessible. Um, and I think having a YouTube, having the ability to record ourselves play and build a channel around it, um, 
is a really cool thing to be able to do. So a lot of people are now doing it um, with all sorts of instruments. Um, and I would say actually, um, ha not having looked in great detail, uh, there are quite a lot of pianist uh, YouTube channels out there doing very well, but there aren't many other instruments who um, are instrumentalists who are making something on YouTube. Um, so perhaps the organ might actually come into its own um, thanks to having access to Hauptwerk uh, at home um, and um, affordable organs. This, by the way, uh, was, believe it or not, very affordable. Um, it cost me less than £2,000, this organ, um, for, for what it is. That's incredible. Um, having access to this and having access to these recordings online, I think the organ has a very positive um, and strong future. I think a lot of people are going through, coming, growing up seeing what the organ's all about and actually wanting to get really involved in it. And these joint junior organ recitals, um, I hope, will help inspire um, and encourage more people to play and to record and to work harder, to improve and see and hear other people play and therefore learn. One of the new things, one of the things that we're going to do on the new organ is to have organ workshops, organ masterclasses for young organists um, given by experienced, professional, well-known um, organists um, who are experts in their field, um, leading an organ masterclass um, with half a dozen young organists. So that's one of the reasons I'm very keen to have the new organ. I can't do it on this because it's a bit flimsy and you know, it doesn't always do what it should do. <laughs> On to our final piece now. We're going to hear a piece um, by Siegfried Karg Ehlert, um, Symphonic Chorale on Ach, uh, Ach Bleib mit Deiner Gnade. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderfully um, Germanic um, symphonic piece, this. It's not one that I knew particularly well. I, I had heard it before, but I don't play this at all. Um, Lieven uh, Zautashvili is going to play this. Um, a young German organist, so Paul with the Oslo and Chatonot, I don't know, but you have another German organist, same age as you, um, who's going to play very nicely indeed um, on this wonderful uh, German organ in, uh, well, in Berlin. I'll hand over to Lee Van uh, so he can introduce it himself. Hi. My name is Levan Sautashvili, I'm 22 years old and I'm studying church music with Henry Fairs at the University of Arts in Berlin. Um, I'm going to play Ach bleib mit deiner Gnade. It's a, a, a choral transcription from, from uh, Siegfried Karg Ehlert, uh, a variation, and I'm playing it on the uh, Steinmeier organ in uh, Corpus Christi in um, in Prenzlauer Berg in Berlin. It's a very beautiful, uh, late romantic organ. Um, I hope you enjoy it.
what's a really terrific sounding organ and a piece that I didn't really know very well. It's very similar to music by um, you know, Max Rager and um, it's already been mentioned in the chat, but Liszt as well. Um, lots of chromatic language and diminished chords and development. Uh, it's really wonderful, really wonderful. Uh, Levan, thank you very much indeed for your, for your wonderful um, emotional playing. That's really, really uh, inspiring for me actually uh, to, see, to see that. And in fact, seeing all of these young organists play is very inspiring for me. And I think I speak for uh, people uh, my age and above who, who, who seeing young people play, just, it, it gives us a fresh boost of energy uh, to play uh, again and practice and, uh, and keep going. So thank you, um, you young organists, for providing us with inspiration. It's not just, uh, it's a two-way thing, so thank you very much. Well, what a real joy it is to see these people play. Um, just a, a small snippet of talent that there is uh, across the world. And I suspect that when we do our next joint junior organ recital uh, in the future, and we will hear more people. There are people who came forwards actually to this recital uh, wanting to be involved, but just unfortunately you know, passed past the deadline. Um, so we will do it again and we will feature different organists uh, from, from all over the world. And we'll have a, a really wonderfully varied repertoire as well. Um, tomorrow night is the festival organ recital. I shall be giving that this time. Um, and I will, I will be playing um, Vidor's sixth organ symphony. I'll be using the iPad actually, I won't be using this. Um, I'll be playing uh, J.S. Bach's first trio sonata in E flat, and I'll be playing Mendelssohn's sixth organ sonata in D minor, the one based on the chorale, uh, chorale um, Vata um, Unser in Himmelreich, uh, Our Father Who Art in Heaven. So, three uh, varied organ sonatas on the wonderful. Um, exciting, thrilling French organ of Caen. Um, so tomorrow night, 7.30 UK time, check your local time zone, uh, look out for that. I really hope that you are enjoying the inaugural BIS Organ Festival. This is the very first one that I've done. Um, so I really would like your feedback. Please do email me. There's um, Go and get the uh, organ festival program, details in there, how you can email me and offer me feedback. Um, we want to be uh, making improvements for next time. The next, the next one will be in uh, winter on the new organ, of course. So two more to go, uh, festival organ recital tomorrow and of course virtual church on Saturday where we are in St George's Church in Wick, which is in Chichester, down on the south coast, a two manual uh, Nicholson organ. So until tomorrow night, thank you to everyone for joining in, for submitting. Thank you for you for commenting. Please click like if you haven't done already. Um, and please do leave me a comment on this video, not in the live chat. Uh, please leave me a comment, it really helps. And thank you to those people who've left donations in, your, in the chat. Your virtual honesty tickets are really appreciated. So until tomorrow night, I'll say, I'll say uh, cheerio. Goodbye everyone, take care and stay safe. Goodbye.